Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be showing you the basics of Selenium. So to get started, I'll show you what we're going to make in this tutorial. So if I run our code, Selenium is going to pull up a Chrome window, which I'll drag over. And now without me touching the keyboard, it typed in Kyle Wilson code and pressed enter. It's going to wait three seconds and then it's going to close. So that's what we'll be making in this tutorial. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get our Selenium environment set up. So to start, we need to pip install Selenium. So since I'm on Windows, that means I'm going to open the command prompt and type pip install selenium. If you don't know how to pip install, I'll put a link in the description and on the top right of your screen. But assuming you have that pip installation done, now we need to get the drivers. So here I'm at the selenium read the docs. And if I go to drivers, you can see uh, it has a link to all the popular web browsers and drivers. So if you want to control Chrome, you need to not only have Chrome installed, but you also need to get this driver file. So here I would go to this link and then I would download whatever driver corresponds to the current version of Chrome I have on my computer. Okay, so now I've downloaded that Chrome driver and I put it in this folder. And here's the thing. So you have two options for how you tell Python where your drivers are. So you can either have the driver in the same folder as your Python code that contains all the Selenium logic, or alternatively, if you're gonna be making tons and tons of Selenium applications, you could put this Chrome driver in your system path. That way Python always knows where it is, but that's a more advanced topic, so we'll save that for another video. Okay, now that we have our environment and directory set up, let's start editing this Python file. So here I have idle, and I have my code view on the left and the console on the right. So to start, let's get Selenium to open up Chrome, go to google.com, and then close the browser. So to start, I say from Selenium, import web driver. And WebDriver is a sub-module that's actually going to grab onto that Chrome driver that we just downloaded. So I'll say open web browser. And our driver is equal to webdriver.chrome. So now we're saying webdriver, go find that Chrome driver that I just downloaded and put that into our variable driver. And now we can say things like driver.maximize window, which I think is just always good practice to get into as well as driver.delete all cookies. So deleting all the cookies, again, just good practice, but it's not required. This will prevent one test from interfering with another. But once we have that done, we can navigate to our web page by saying driver.get http colon slash slash google.com. So we're going to navigate to that page. And then after we're done with that, I'll come all the way down here and say close web browser. And we do that by saying driver.close. So if I were to run this right now, what's going to happen is we're going to open up our thing, go to Google and close super, super fast. So to give us some time to look at it, I'm going to import time, which is a core Python module. So no pip installations necessary, but I'll say time.sleep3. So I'm going to run this. And Chrome's going to open up on my other monitor and I'll drag it over for us. But now we can see we went to Google. We're going to wait three seconds and then it's going to close. So I didn't have my hands on the keyboard or anything. We had Selenium do all of that for us. Okay, for this next part, we need to talk about a little bit of HTML and CSS. So I've just opened up Chrome normally and we're going to go through how we identify elements and how we communicate those to Selenium. So what we want to happen is we want to find this address bar in our code and then have our code send some text here and press enter. So we need a way of telling Selenium that we want to click on this search field. So what you can do is right click the search field and hit inspect. Alternatively, uh, for most websites, you can go into the uh, page source view, um, but it's different for different browsers, but whichever one you want to use is perfectly fine. But anyway, here we can see in this gobbledygook we have an input field. And this input field is this search bar. And again, if I right click and hit inspect, it gets highlighted over here on the right. So now we need to find a way to uniquely identify this input field from any others that might be on the page. And luckily for us, Google only has one, but for certain websites, you might have that issue. Regardless, let's look at the properties of this input field. So we can see class equals some gobbledygook, JS action, blah, blah, blah. The thing we're usually looking for is ID, but there is no ID property here. So the second best thing would be name. Here we can see 
name equals q. So if we say find an input field that's name is equal to q, that can only possibly be referring to this one field, and that's how Selenium is going to know what to click on. Okay, so hopping back to our code, let's write some Selenium code that finds that search bar, and let's type in some text and press enter. So to start, I'll say find search bar, type query, and hit enter. So to start, we're going to say search bar, so we'll make a variable for that navigation bar, and say driver.findElement. And this is going to require two things. We'll say by.name and q. So find element requires two parameters. The first one is what are we searching by? And we're searching by the name attribute. And we're looking for a value of q. So if we look back at Chrome here, we're saying look for this name attribute, find the value of q. And if you find those two things, then that means we're on the right element. So once we're there, we can say, search bar dot send keys and we're going to say the the string kyle wilson code so we're going to type out all of that after that we're going to say search bar dot send keys keys dot return so here i'm calling the same function but this time instead of passing in a string like this i'm going to pass in keys dot return so real quick Let's do these import statements and then we'll go back and explain all the code. So for our by here, I'm going to say from selenium dot webdriver dot common dot by import by. And then for keys dot return, I'm going to say from selenium dot webdriver. If I can type webdriver dot common dot keys import keys. So these are just little things that Selenium has made for us to make our lives easier. So we're using the first one to specify the attribute type. And then this keys refers to the keys on your keyboard. So keys.return is pressing the enter key. Likewise, you could say keys.tab, keys.f1, keys.alt, all those good things. But this should be everything we need. So now when we hit run module, I'll drag over the Chrome window. And we can see that no hands on the keyboard, it types Kyle Wilson code and presses enter. All right, so that covers the basics of Selenium. Uh, in future videos, we'll be going over how to locate elements by different properties, how to interact with different types of elements, and how to integrate with things like the unit test module and pile GUI. But that's it for this one. Like the video if you liked it. See ya.